Hello, good evening, and welcome in. This is The Spread. I am Cameron Taren. With me, as always, SoCon John Hooper. SoCon John, man, you um, how you feeling after your boys lost yesterday? You, did you sleep all right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I wasted like 8,000 words on <laughs> my preview on, on the blog, but... Um, <laughs> I thought it was all going to be worth it, but uh, far from what either of us thought that it yeah, might be no. a shootout and, and the game day guys as well, um, I was really confused by the the fact that, you know, in the second half especially, Appalachian had trouble running the ball. Yeah. And that's something that they did really well against uh, Charlotte and did all did well all last season. Um, so we'll, We'll see. I mean, you know, it seems like Zach Thomas, the quarterback, may – I don't know whether he's not getting enough protection, but at least through the first two games, he doesn't seem like the same quarterback as we've seen. in the Yeah, in, from last year. Past. Yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll d- dig into that App State and Marshall game a, uh, uh, game a little bit more uh, coming up in the show. Going to recap week three of the college football season. Um, today, John, some interesting games. It wasn't the greatest slate of games, the greatest schedule, but there actually did turn out to be some pretty good yeah. games um, and some some big surprises um, and near upsets that we'll get into. The NC State, game was the NC State Wake Forest game was probably one of the better games all night, and I don't know if a lot of people even saw it. Um, but, yeah, we'll talk about that, talk about plenty more. Before we get into college football, though, it is Sunday, John. That means there's NFL on. And so we'll take just a a little bit of time here and kind of go through the NFL today. Uh, Carolina 0-2 now as they just got obliterated by Tampa Bay down on the road in Tampa. Yeah, Teddy Bridgewater finally decided to start throwing it to his team. And, (laughs) yeah, and um, you know, uh, they they fell behind 21 to nothing. But to their credit, you know, they cut it to a touchdown on two occasions. I thought Christian McCaffrey really had a his you know a better better week this week for whatever reason he was he's doing it all um, and really challenged and, and kept uh, I think stress on the on the Tampa defense. Yeah, um, yeah, I I just don't know. But the, 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 the offensive line is just not very good. I the mean, offensive not, line's not very good, and surprisingly, I mean, the defense is not good at all either. Yeah, they're they're one of the worst defense. I would venture to say that they're probably right now the worst defense in the NFL. Yeah. I don't even have the numbers in front of me, but um, basing on watching most of the game last week and, th- and then watching the one this week, I would say that. Uh, yeah, I mean, they outgained Tampa, but the problem was is Carolina threw, uh, had four turnovers uh, in the game. Teddy Bridgewater threw two interceptions. Uh, and did you notice Tampa blitz the whole game? Yeah. <laughs> like, they, they knew that Carolina's off, offensive line wasn't good at all. No, no, it, it wasn't, and, and it showed. Uh, a little surprising here, John. How about Arizona, the Cardinals, up 20 to nothing on Washington right now in the third? Yeah, that, you know, considering what we saw out of Washington against what I think is going to end up being a pretty good Philadelphia team last week, um, that one's a little bit of a head scratcher. But, uh, you know, it's it's about time that, you know, I call them Phoenix, but Arizona is good again. <laughs> yeah. You always think they, they've got good players. I mean. Yeah, Kyler you know, Murray's playing well. Yeah, and and they've got still got what I think, even though he's getting up there in age, one of the better receivers in the NFL, and Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, so. and now he's got DeAndre Hopkins throwing to it out there in Arizona, so he's got two the really, highest paid non quarterback. Yeah, in the NFL. I mean that's a good tandem of wide receivers that Kyler's got throwing to. You know, I mean that's yeah. that's incredible. As long as he can see them. Yeah, um, exactly. Over the offensive line. line. Yeah, he's so short. Yeah. yeah. The offensive line. No, I'm going to call you out a little bit, John. You said you thought Philadelphia was going to be a, a good team. They just got blitzed by L.A., the Rams today, 37-19. Yeah. and 19. Well, they were supposed to be. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the thing about the NFL, you know, so many times, especially with the <laughs> with that division, 
<laughs> you really don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you just assume, you know, the, and well, of course you can't assume that the giants may never be good again, but um, <laughs> you know, like the, the teams that have usually been good in the past, um, you know, will be good again. I mean, yeah. it wasn't so long ago that Philadelphia won a Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, they got rid of, um, oh, it, it was Carson Wentz got hurt that year. And uh, you had, uh, who's really came, struggled to who, stay healthy? He has. Who came in and won that Super Bowl? That backup that Nick Foles. Nick, Nick Foles, Foles. That's it. And then they let, uh, he, where is he now? Well, he was in Jacksonville. Well, they let him go to Jacksonville. Yeah. Now, I don't know where, it, where he went from there because I know they, they dealt him this summer somewhere. Yeah. Um, of course, Jacksonville <laughs> really like their half their team. Uh, one of those was Leonard <laughs> Leonard Fournette, Fournette who who gashed who sealed the game. Yeah, who gashed Carolina today um, in that game. Uh, Tennessee looking very good again. Uh, Tennessee might be a, a a potential favorite against Kansas City in that AFC this year. Um, Big game tonight too. Uh, New England and, and Seattle. Seattle. What a great matchup that'll be. Cam Newton going up against Russell Wilson. Let's we'll see how Cam does in prime time with his new team. Yeah, and uh, they had some great battles when he, even when he was at Carolina. Um, you know, some great games uh, between Seattle and um, Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. So uh, two of the better. I think you know at one time were the probably the two best dual threat quarterbacks. quarterbacks yeah. Um, but still, uh, Cam looked pretty good last week against uh, the Dolphins. I know it was the Dolphins, but I'll be interested to see how he looks against a legitimate defense, you know, because um, yeah. I think Seattle's got one of the better defenses in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be fun. And then the Monday night game tomorrow night is, a, is actually a very intriguing matchup. Saints going to Las Vegas, the home opener for the Las Vegas Raiders now. Man, Las Vegas is my sleeper this year. Um, Derek Carr had a good day last week. Yeah, he did. And um, that offense is nothing to, I, you know, I thought it was going to be their defense, but yeah, really the defense. their offense was the Josh, one that, Josh Jacobs at running back gives them a, a, a much needed boost at that position. Right. And, um, you know, they've got, they already had good receivers. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Derek and Carr struggled a little bit last year, but I think, you know, I think he's a, pretty good quarterback and um i know that coach gruden kind of stayed on him a little bit uh harder yeah. than uh maybe he should have last year so it'll be interesting to see what kind of season he has. yeah so that's just a little bit of the uh nfl action taking place this week um, baltimore up right now 20 to 10 on houston on houston yeah it's houston's offensive line continuing to struggle but also too what was surprising to me is their defense has not been very yeah. good right right um, and you kind of, you know, you kind of feel bad for Deshaun. Yeah. Um, they paid him all that money. Yeah. And he's got, he's got good skill position players. Yeah. He just can't yep. get the blocking. He needs. Yep. So that was the, uh, some just the action of and week two of the NFL, uh, on the college football was week three in NCAA, uh, John, it got started with a, an interesting kind of game on uh, Friday night down in Conway, Coastal yeah. Carolina, uh, taking on Campbell and the uh, the Chanticleers coming away with a uh, a twenty two point win over the Camels, forty three twenty one. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I think for the most part uh, was expected, but I thought Campbell played well at times in that game. Um, just got overwhelmed a little bit early. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, I mean, you know, I think that Coastal Carolina has a pretty good defense and they've got a good young quarterback um, like uh, Tampa was doing today. I, I saw them blitz a lot um, on uh, Friday night and, you know, they take a lot of chances with man coverage, but they've got they've got the athleticism to do that. Yeah. Um, which is kind of weird to say about a Sunbelt team, but you're seeing uh, now these, even these group of five schools have guys that are just, you know, fast and can run. And um, so it's not, it's not a just limited to power five schools speed. 
Yeah, I thought uh, I thought Coastal Carolina looked really good. I, I know it's against Campbell, but Campbell, I mean, that's a Campbell team that nearly beat Georgia Southern uh, a week ago. I mean, so. Yeah. But I thought Coastal looked very good. You know, that's a big, big, you know, game for them. You know, national television on a Friday night. No other college games being played. So all eyes, really, if you were watching college football, uh, was on them. So that's big for that program. And, and and they could have had a letdown after that big win over Kansas. Yeah, they could they have. Didn't. And uh, which I think, you know, I think they're a team that's, you know, I think they've looked among the best teams in the Sun Belt yep. so far, and that was a great game. Potential dark, ho- potential dark horse, I think, in the in the Sun Belt. What about Georgia State and, and Louisiana? What a what a great football yeah, game! Good game there, yeah. Uh, taking it to overtime uh, in mm-hmm. in that game, um, Louisiana able to squeak it out though down there in Atlanta. Um, yeah, yeah, but uh, I mean Louisiana, another team uh, that you know has a real shot at the. Uh, Sun Belt title this year. You know, for, uh, team for team in that conference, they've probably been the most, I think, a, a complete team so far yeah. and most impressive. Um, you know, because I think, I think Georgia State, you know, is is going to be pretty good, and and we've seen with Sean Elliott their ability to score points that that hasn't gone away. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but uh, like. Like uh, Louisville, uh, they haven't yet figured out the defensive side of the ball. <laughs> yeah. Well, two South Carolina teams based off Saturday afternoon, Clemson and the Citadel. The Citadel um, had just come off a, an embarrassing loss to USF in which the punter <laughs> kicked a zero-yard punt for a touchdown. They kept <laughs> they showing that. Re- I know. Poor Saturday. kid. Poor kid, they uh, kept showing that replay yeah. over and over I, again I mean, on anybody, Saturday. That happens, like that, like they said on game day. I mean, that happens at least once in your yeah. You do something dumb, you know, you know, crazy. I mean, it's going to happen. So yeah, but Clemson's offense came out firing early on, put up a bunch of points in the first half, and then once they put the backups in in the second half, neither team scored a point in the second half. Uh, of that game Saturday, final score forty nine to nothing. Clemson. Well, out- I mean, I think that was more Clemson saying, "Well, we're not going to score than it was." <laughs> yeah. Although I will say the some of the second and third string guys there for Clemson. I mean, I, look, I get a lot of those guys are freshmen. They're young, haven't had a lot of playing time, but it, it was sloppy, um, real sloppy. Uh, DJ. How much did they give? Uh- the backup quarterback, did they give him a chance to throw downfield at all, or was it? Uh, he did take a couple shots. DJ uh, Uyunglele was 8 of, uh, eight of 11, 75 yards, um, but he had two rushing touchdowns on the day um, within, you know, both of those touchdowns, well, like inside the five-yard line, but he had okay, yeah. two, two rushing touchdowns. Trevor Lawrence, 8 of 9, passing 168 yards and three touchdowns. I saw uh, a couple of them. The one he, he the the I think it was the second one he threw to the to Amari Rod ball. yeah to Amari yeah. Rogers and then he threw that another was, deep ball to Frank Ladson Jr. Absolutely, both yeah. of those were just on a rope, um, just perfect I passes. Actually, I think it was actually a good catch too because the one was coming over that I think it was Rogers' shoulder, and I mean yep. it's not the yep. easiest catch. No, it especially. Especially the goalpost goal was coming. Yeah, I mean, he that's yeah, that's a scary catch as a wide receiver. We've seen in the past that was the same end zone that mm-hmm. uh, Mike Williams. Williams that Mike yeah. Williams ran into the goalpost and ended his walk. season. Yep, one year, and so um, yeah, then uh, that's scary. But unfortunately, uh, Amari called it, missed the the goalpost, and everything yeah. was fine. But. Clemson's defense, I mean, Citadel's offense had no answer early on in that game. And they, they ended up with 162 yards of total offense, but most of that came in the fourth quarter with third string quarterback well, and the thing Jalen Adams. Is, I know it's an FCS school, but that offense is designed to get, you know, two or three hundred yards on the ground, even if you're playing an FBS school. Now you might not score, but it 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 normally puts up yardage, so 
the fact that Clemson held them under 200 yards is pretty impressive. The stat that gets me is the Citadel a triple option team had almost as many passing yards as they did rushing yards. <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> so Rainey was putting it in the air some, huh? Well, Rainey, Rainey, two of nine, 38 yards. Raleigh Webb was one for one. He had a 38-yarder. So Raleigh <laughs> Webb. He got half the receiving yards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Raleigh Webb threw one pass for as many yards as Brandon Rainey threw. Was it, so it was a trick play? Is that what they did? Uh, I don't remember. It was Ryan McCarthy called it for 38 yards. Okay, okay. I was just wondering why a wide receiver threw it. Now, Raleigh Webb did catch one for 22 okay. yards. Okay. Yeah, they say he's uh, the Webb guys, the fastest guy on their team. So the, You know, the, the Citadel offense, though, I mean, they looked a lot better with Jalen Adams, the third-string quarterback. That's know. what they were saying. Is there a co- quarterback controversy? <laughs> With with Jalen Adams now, you know, because he did look so good yeah. in the second half. Yeah. Um, a very shifty type player. Um, and a, a little bit quicker, you know, he's got a little bit quicker than, than Rainey. So it'll be interesting to see when <laughs> when the spring gets here uh, who, who the starter is. Yeah. I didn't realize so many Citadel running backs had opted out or not playing yeah. this year. They have like three or four backs that aren't going to play, including Smith, well, in, the, the Alex Ramsey. And Alex Ramsey, that's a big name that was lost for them. Yeah, and he's not uh, – so this was his last – I don't even think he's coming back in the spring. Oh, really? Because, yeah, <laughs> that's what I heard. Wow, so. that's that's a big um, loss for them. You know, and was it? Did I hear right that Brent Thompson didn't want a running clock or something? Or? He did. He uh, Dabo offered to do, do a running clock in the second half, and uh, Citadel coach um, declined that offer. He said that's not what the Citadel is all about. So, is he a masochist? Yeah. <laughs> well, it ended up working out. Clemson didn't score at all in the second half, so I mean, well, it, it didn't hurt him any. But I will say, okay. I've seen Furman get beat a bad a lot. I don't know that I've I, I'll see I'll say I've seen it once. Auburn. <laughs> but the year before they had Cam Newton had I think forty eight points and a half. But the, I don't know that I've seen a team uh from Furman get forty nine scored on them and a half. I uh, not in my my lifetime yeah. at least. Not saying it couldn't happen, it's just you don't remember it happening. You don't, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. that that's rare to happen to anybody, but yeah. um, but but when you're playing a team as talented as Clemson, certainly not a surprise. Not a surprise at all. So the Tigers, two and zero, uh, they get the week off this upcoming week, uh, so we won't see them, and then they're back at it in the, the first weekend the f- of October. But um, the fact that South Florida got drilled this weekend yeah, well, and, and they owned the Citadel, yeah. that, that makes me concerned about whether uh-huh. the Citadel yeah. is. I, I agree. I agree. We'll talk about that Notre Dame game a little bit too, maybe coming up. Uh, when we come back from the first break, uh, some near upsets that took place, John. Uh, Oklahoma State nearly you know, had to yeah. pull out a gutsy win uh, against uh, Tulsa. Um, Louise that we talked about, Louisiana. Maybe we can go about uh, go into that game a little bit more. And mm-hmm. uh, Pittsburgh had some major struggles early on wow. with with yes, Syracuse. Sure. So, a couple I of games, some of that game. yes, a couple of uh, some close games for the favorite teams, ranked teams. So we'll talk about those games on the other side of the break. You're listening to the spread. Hey, hon, what you doing with your fun? Do flowers have best friends? I don't know. Hey, look. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. America, your children have an amazing superpower. That's right. They can help save lives by simply washing their hands. Just 20 seconds of thorough hand washing after they've coughed or sneezed or been outside can help fight against the dastardly spread of germs. Armed with only soap and water and hands, your superhero can protect you, your family, and everyone out there in America land. Amazing. Find out more at coronavirus.gov. A message from the CDC and the Ad Council. I asked what kind of family she wanted. She said, 
a family like yours. Learn more about adopting a teen at adoptuskids.org. You can't imagine the reward. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Hey, Dad, how do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Is this tree good for climbing? How are babies made? What does this thing do? Kids are curious about everything, including guns. Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Safe gun storage saves lives. Learn how to make your home safer at nfamilyfire.org. That's nfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady and the Ad Council. Week three of the college football season in the books. We talked about the Clemson Tigers beating the Citadel at home. You know, no surprise there, uh, John, with that one. But uh, there were some favorite teams, some ranked teams in FBS play that didn't have that uh, comfortable (laughs) win that Clemson uh, had. You had uh, a a number of teams, uh, ranked teams, that uh, facing lesser opponents that – that struggled and struggled mightily. Uh, Oklahoma, we were talking about it in the break, the Oklahoma State uh, game against <laughs> Tulsa. It was rough there. And there, were, there well, for a while, I thought Tulsa was going to pull it out. But <laughs> yeah, um, I was going to say. This but 13, un, 13 unanswered points for uh, the Cowboys there in the fourth quarter were able to, uh, to you, know, pro, you know, get Oklahoma State the win. But Man, it was it was rough, especially when Spencer Sanders, the starting quarterback, went out early in the game, and then Chuba Hubbard, the the star running back, they they just couldn't run the ball. Right. Oh yeah. Um, and that's the thing is, you know, I'll give them a little bit of a break because losing your your starter, you know, the guy that you you thought was, and, and this is the Oklahoma State team that had pretty much everyone back and was a dark horse favorite to reach the playoff um, and maybe win the Big 12. Uh, now what does this, you know, is it going to be all Chuba Hubbard? And you mentioned yep. it. They had trouble running the ball anyway. So mm-hmm. um, that offensive line is a little bit of a concern now for Oklahoma State. I well, I, and I will say probably once Sanders went out, you know, yeah. I think the the focus for that Tulsa defense, they were all locked in on Hubbard and stopping mm-hmm. him and forcing those backup quarterbacks, Illingworth and Bullock that came in, um, forcing them to make plays. Um, and yeah. there were a couple good throws and some good catches by uh, by some of the uh, Oklahoma State receivers. But, uh, yeah, if, if, if Hubbard's not able to have the sort of success that we've seen from him the past couple of years, I – I worry about this Oklahoma State offense for the long run. Yeah, yeah, I mean, certainly. I mean, um, and, and it's something that, you know, when they get into to Big 12 play, that's not going to be uh, – they're not going to get, a, you know, a, a mulligan or whatever from no, a Big right. 12 opponent. So, uh, you know, when they play the Oklahomas and, and other teams, of course – I think the Big 12 might be a little bit down this year. It, we'll have to see yeah. um, on that. But. <laughs> well, <laughs> you had three Big 12 teams lose to Sunbelt teams last week. So. Exactly. So, um, but, I, you know, I think uh, I think clearly right now Oklahoma was Spencer Rattler. Yeah. At, you know, the team to be. Well, and yeah, them, um, if Texas, I think if Texas, the offense for the Longhorns, I think will be fine. Um, I worry about Texas. If Baylor ever plays. They yeah, if Baylor a- actually decides to play, they were scheduled to play Houston, and then that game got canceled last minute. <laughs> Literally, Saturday morning, the game got right. canceled. Um, so that was, you know, a bit of a a bummer there um that i was actually looking forward to that game i thought that would would have been a a good game but uh it wasn't just oklahoma state that struggled uh we talked a little bit about it louisiana the raging cajuns going on the road taking on georgia state uh and they had to you know try to win it and they you know the panthers took them to overtime and uh fortunately for louisiana they were able to pull it out uh in overtime now that was that georgia state's 
first game of the year. Is that right? It was. Okay. So, um, you know, I, I thought Georgia State offensively was always going to be good with who they've got, you know, like uh, Sean Elliott and, and that offensive staff. They, they were good offensively last year. It was just um, – appears to be their same problem this year. They yeah. haven't been able to stop anybody. And uh, Georgia State's got another quarterback, much like Dan Ellington last year and Cornelius yeah. Brown, another dual yeah, threat he's guy. Very good and very elusive from the part the the part of the game I saw. I mean he he's one of those guys that seemingly can get out of anything and you know Louisiana had him sacked a couple of times on one play and he somehow got a way to get three or four yards yeah so exactly you know give them credit go give louisiana credit because they got down into holes a couple of times and they were trailing the, about the whole game yeah it was 14 nothing at one point they they were able to, to cut it to a touchdown then they got and then it was 21 7 and then they were able to just kind of keep chipping away um and then it ultimately um get it to overtime where where they end up uh, Elijah Mitchell scoring a 12-yard touchdown run to, to steal the deal for the Cajuns. You know, Levi, uh, is it Levi Lewis? Um, yeah. It's such a, a good quarterback for them. I mean, he's, he's so – it seems like he's been there like six years. But um, <laughs> you mentioned Elijah Mitchell, another guy that seems like he's been there forever. Um, they've got such uh, maturity on – you know, on the offensive side of the ball, but I think they had like 19 starters back from last year's team. So, um, you know, a lot of people might have been surprised that they, I think that the more surprising thing about the Iowa State game was it was not close, not the fact that necessarily that Louisiana won. Yeah, the, yeah, it was a, a big, I mean, <laughs> win for Louisiana, but Georgia State, I mean, didn't look bad. I mean, I'll give them that. They, they played a heck of a ball game. You know, what is that? Yeah. I think the Sun Belt's so strong this year. It's kind of a little surprising. The states look about the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They're not the worst. It's no, South Alabama. Sure. You still got them. Uh, UTSA, I, the, I know. Uh, I know. Troy play. Yeah. I know uh, UTSA is not uh, Sun Belt, but they struggled against uh, Stephen F. Austin. They're <laughs> the Roadrunners. The Lumberjacks. Yeah. <laughs> The Lumberjacks have nearly beat two FBS schools this year. They uh, Funny nearly thing is they've had uh, two really good. They've got a new head coach, and he's brought in two really good recruiting classes. So yeah. um, maybe things are you know they were a really a power in the SCS in in the mid nineties. So maybe things are going to get back to to where they were then. Yes, yeah. So uh, and then uh, another team that actually was surprising the way that Pittsburgh had beaten Austin P last week. They come out here yeah. uh, this week uh, against Syracuse, and I mean, Syracuse was hanging around there for for a good while. It was fourteen to ten going into the half, and Pittsburgh well, really Syracuse, could just you know was a a team that that gave. I mean, I won't say they gave North Carolina headaches, but they you know they their defense was good enough to, to at least keep them early on in that game. Yeah, yeah, you're you're right. You're very right. Um. I think the defense for Syracuse isn't the problem. It's not the problem. It's the <laughs> no, Syracuse it's offense. Defeat. Didn't they switch quarterbacks? Or they uh, did. Rex Culpepper comes in as the new quarterback for Syracuse um, and just zipped. I mean, he had a bomb of a, was it a 69-yard <laughs> yeah. touchdown pass in the second quarter that actually gave Syracuse the lead. Um, yeah. Yeah. At one point, so yeah, they, you know they in that first half, that you know it, they actually looked to me like the better team in that game. Yeah, um, uh, I don't blame um, us. I don't blame Syracuse for benching Devito. I mean, the guy has nah, just he's, he's had a whole no. He, he had all of last year to try to improve. He hasn't. He goes out there on <laughs> on Saturday, goes, and he's still no good. Goes nine of fifteen for thirty-two yards and a touchdown uh, and an interception. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I don't blame him. I think Rex Culpepper. But the weird uh, thing right is, how did the they get that? How did they get that so wrong? He was so highly yeah. touted. But you, know, you see, in. I don't know. You see that a lot, though. You see highly touted guys come in and just just aren't that good. Yeah, yeah. just aren't that good. Um, Kenny Pickett. How about Pittsburgh has become a passing team. I mean, yeah, that's that's what's. Uh, but they have, you know, 
one of the best receivers in the country. Um, you know, the, uh, what was the guy's, uh, he's, he's like six, six. And, uh, yeah. um, I can't remember his name, but Pickett is the, you know, obviously the returning quarterback, returning starter. So, cause I mean, um, we're used to seeing this Pittsburgh team, you know, with, uh, with a Connor yeah, you know, running, running the ball. Wow. Yeah. Running the ball. And it's can't come out there and, and we're, Slinging around against Syracuse. Going back to the Walt Harris days and when they had Larry Fitzgerald. Harris, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's kind of kind of reminds you of those of those days. But yeah, you know, surprising to say the least. Uh you know, Syracuse I just don't think's very good. And but no. defensively they've they've held you know, are they both, better than they are were last year? Is a defensively, I think they are. But the problem yeah. again is if they got they got to find they got to figure something out on the offense. I'm I'm I'll, I will be I'm in, you know awaiting the debut of Maryland this year just to see how bad they are. How much <laughs> they well, we have to wait about a month before <laughs> we get to see them. But for 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 Syracuse, they have Georgia Tech next week. And we saw UCF. Uh, Georgia Tech Gosh, was Georgia no Tech was hanging around. They were hanging around UCF for, yeah. for most of the game, and then late in the game, it got out of control pretty, I think you pretty saw badly. Where, where I, I, it wasn't necessarily Georgia Tech's offense that was the problem. It was that they they just had no answers to stop UCF's offense. Yeah, Dylan Gabriel threw for four hundred yards and four yeah. touchdowns. I mean, <laughs> just crazy. But, but on the same hand, UCF might have a, 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 you know, other than Clemson, probably has a better offense than anybody in the ACC. Maybe other than Clemson, yeah, that's North true. Carolina. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, UCF's a good team, man. Yeah. Um, and we've seen consistently over the past, you know, three, four years how good, how good UCF is. So I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But surprising to to say the least at uh, if UCF some of these goes teams. Undefeated and, and- would they be considered for a playoff spot? Yeah, probably not. Yeah, because they may be they may be as good as the team that. I think the know, only I way I think the only way they have to play Memphis and Cincinnati, two teams that are both ranked. They need looks good. they need Memphis and Cincinnati to both be ranked or you know you know up there when yeah, they play. Yeah, to have I think if 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 either of those teams is not ranked, if they don't play any ranked teams or only play one ranked team, I don't think that gives them a chance. That but. actually could have happened last year if if you think about it, because of Memphis and SMU, if one of those teams had gone on and gone undefeated. Yeah. Um, because they would have had enough they would have had two wins over highly ranked teams. Highly ranked teams, exactly. And you're gonna need to see that, I think, in order for a group of five team like UCF uh, to, right, to get yeah. a playoff spot. Yeah. Uh, but, John, let's go take another break real quick. When we come back, some really, um, you know, the big games of the weekend um, didn't really disappoint, although the App State Marshall game was – They disappointed me. Yeah, that game was a disappointment. But in in less of a way, it was more of a disappointment that it was such a low-scoring game. Um, just too many penalties. I yeah, mean, they, they got to get that. Cr- too many dome penalties. On yeah, the yeah. Sport. But we'll talk about uh, some of the bigger games, some of the better games uh, from this weekend on the other side of the break. You're listening to the spread. It's 4 a.m. Monday, and you're literally sucking baby snot through a tube because she's congested. Man, that's love. And if you love her that much, love her enough to make sure she's buckled in the right car seat. To make sure your child's in the right seat for their age and size, visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Show them you love them. Keep them safe. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. When is the best time to talk to your family about staying in touch during a disaster? Amid the chaos? Or is the best time perhaps today? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. The possibility of lung cancer can be pretty scary, especially if you're one of approximately 8 million current or former smokers at high risk. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know that now there's a breakthrough low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early, and it only takes 60 seconds. You stop smoking. Now start screening. For an easy quiz to see if you're eligible, visit SaveByTheScan.org. It could save your life. 
SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council. Hi, Mick Cronin here for the original Montgomery and Barbecue Sauce, the sauce you have come to love for over 50 years. Tommy Tuberville here. As we all know, variety is the spice of life, and I'm here to spice things up with the new Montgomery and Chipotle sauce. Just enough kick to bring home a winner. But the original sauce is like me, mild and smooth. But it's time to spice it up with the new Chipotle sauce. It's a game changer. Original. Chipotle, the original Montgomery and barbecue sauce, or the new Chipotle sauce. You decide. Pick up a bottle of both today. Well, John, we we kind of touched on it a little bit at the beginning of the show. You, your boys, your App State Mountaineers, they just couldn't do it. They went up to Huntington. We both picked them to to beat mm-hmm. Marshall. And, you know, early on in the game, it's 7-7 in the first quarter. You know, and I'm thinking, here we go. All right, here comes the shootout, offensive mm-hmm. firepower. And then the defense has stepped second up. Quarter happened. Yeah, second quarter happened, and the offenses just stopped playing, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, I you know, I talked about you know, a little bit during the break. Um, I think it was Harrington had a, a long touchdown uh run that was was called back. Uh it may have been Marcus Williams, I can't remember, but um his knee was down and from that point on it seemed like, you know, it went from being, you know, okay, App State got an interception, turned it into a long seventy yard touchdown run. And then it just seemed like uh, the enthusiasm didn't seem to be there uh, as yeah. it had been. Yeah. Um, and for whatever reason, just dumb penalties. And, you know, in the game that really changed the game is is when uh, Evans um, had that, you know, on that fourth down play, he's wide open, you know, which is a great play call by Tony Peterson, who, is a former Marshall quarterback uh, for the offensive coordinator for App State. Yeah, and Evans is wide open, and you know he's he's going into the end zone, and 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 you see the I think it was Gilmore for for Marshall punched it punched the ball free, and of course that's he ended up recovering it, but even if it goes out of the end zone, it's still Marshall's football. Um, so that was I thought that game that that really really changed the game right there. Yeah, um, Zach Thomas had a a really nice pass uh, that fade yeah. to, to Virgil in the in the corner that of the end zone. Huge. In the end zone, that was probably his best throw all day. But we talked that about was it. A great catch by Virgil. Too. Yeah, it was. It was to keep his to feet in bounds there. He actually, I think, maybe have gotten got his knee in when he slid out. But um, good. that was really the only offensive drive that Appalachian was able. To really put together, you yeah, know, the, the running game. game was not there. I mean, uh, Marshall held App under a hundred yards rushing. Uh, Harrington couldn't do hardly anything. You mentioned the long run that came back. Uh, yeah, didn't have anything other than that. Uh, yeah, Cameron Peoples had a fifty-seven yards on the ground. That was their best rusher of the day. But yeah, Zach Thomas, though you you mentioned it early in the show, seems like a different quarterback from a year ago. What was he? Uh, what was what were his numbers passing? Oh. Uh, twenty two of thirty eight, two sixty eight, one touchdown, one pick. Okay, right. I mean, two, those aren't horrible numbers. Um, but he, I felt like the, the completions, some of the completions he had were, you know, kind of those little don't passes out to yeah. the in the flat, you know, and you know, a lot of the time it would look like we were gonna get big yards on it, and then for whatever reason we'd get three or four and then uh, you know we'd be swarmed out. and you got to give marshall credit i mean they had a very good defensive game plan and, and they've got some athletes on on the defensive side of the ball do i think you know in a normal season that's a ranked i don't think first of all i don't think appalachian should have been ranked and second of all i don't think marshall i think they're good i don't think I'm not i'm not necessarily on board with their ranked football team now and, and they weren't at the time i don't believe but they're i, I guess they're ranked today okay they, they did get up and uh, put yeah. the polls today um 
I will say app after the first quarter, the defense did settle in a little bit. They 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 made Grant Wales, the freshman quarterback for Marshall, seem a little bit more human than he did than he. I mean, he because he played again. I mean, lights out against I Eastern will Kentucky. Say that Wells had the the long pass, the seventy yard pass, which set up the, them to go ahead by ten. That was a big play in that football game. Whereas he didn't he didn't necessarily, you know, just bombard us like he did Eastern Kentucky. Yeah, prior to – well, prior to that, he only had uh, 96 yards passing. Yeah, yeah. So that play right there, you know, and when he made it, showed you how big of a throw that was. And a, maybe a gutsy play call um, yeah, on Marshall's yeah. part, but uh, very, very – you know, he had he, when he needed to make the throw, he made, he made the throw. Well, the problem App State faced it was they couldn't stop the run. One Marshall gashed him for two hundred sixteen yards on the ground. Yeah, um, yeah. The Brandon Knox, the running back for Marshall, Gosh, very good day. He was good. Yeah, very yeah. good, very good performance from him. But you mentioned it too. The 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 real issue for App was dumb mistakes, dumb penalties. Too many personal, fa- you know. Too many, ga- you know. There was one time in front of the ref or, where the play is over on a punt return, and he, you know, a guy just launches himself into a. Mar- I mean, that's just stupid. I mean, hitting people out of bounds. Uh, and I realized one of the plays was kind of a bang bang play, but it's still dumb. I mean, you know, you try to hold up. Um, <laughs> but <were> it just. <laughs> There were a lot of penalties in that game, John. Eight <laughs> App had eight for eighty-two yards, and Marshall had eleven for one hundred and seventeen. <laughs> yeah, those two teams don't like each other. <laughs> yeah. Probably a lot of those personal of the fifteen-yard variety. <laughs> yeah, probably. But you know, the funny thing is, Marshall on one drive, I think they kept like molesting Thomas Hennigan over there, and. Like the third time, that, so he, this guy already Gilmore already had two offense or pass interference. Yeah. The third time they threw it over there, he picked it off, and I'm just like, <laughs> well, they weren't going to interfere with him again, you know. And yeah, so, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, Hennigan, I will say he made an a tremendous one handed catch in that game. Um, I I think a receiver that's probably underrated nationally but uh maybe maybe has among if not the best hands in the country among uh some of the receivers with the best hands yeah yeah exactly thankfully you know for app it was a disappointing game but uh on the bright side you you come back you get to play campbell this week um and then already played a big south i mean a big (laughs) not a big a sunbelt schedule already already yeah played two sunbelt teams already Play them, uh, and then they get the week off uh, after that. So you got two weeks uh, to to get, Louisiana comes to town. Louisiana comes to town. So you get two weeks uh, to try to fix some of the problems, some of the mistakes, things like that. Clean that up before you take on a really good uh, Louisiana team. That's a Wednesday night game, John. Prime time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's going to be great. And I'll I'll try to do uh, <laughs> less words of a preview, but a preview <laughs> for, for that game. Uh, that, uh, That'll be a good one. Yeah. Uh, and then the big I'm game. It'll be 8,000 words again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, and then the big primetime matchup from this weekend was the Miami-Louisville game. And, you know, we were hyping this game up. We talked about it on the show Thursday how we thought this was going to be a great game, um, probably a, a, a shootout game. And it ended up being high scoring. But, you know, we both thought yeah. that Louisville's offense and their defense had improved enough to where we thought they could – could get over the hump and beat a Miami team, and then, and then Saturday night happened, and we realized that uh, Louisville's defense, still got, yeah, yeah, still has a lot of problems to to fix. Well, and I don't know whether it was, uh, you know, they didn't. The previous coaching staff just, I mean, did they not recruit on that side of the ball, or I don't know exactly what the deal is, yeah. but um, you know. I know that when Dale Jones was at uh, Appalachian State, I mean, you know, they had fairly good defenses there. So I don't think it's the coordinator. I think it's just they don't really have a lot of talent right now on that side of the ball. But, boy, do they ever have talent on 
the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, and they do. The running back position, they've got some speed. They do. And Louisville actually outgained Miami in total offensive yards. The problem was three turnovers by Louisville really, really cost them in, in this game. Malik, yeah, you can't turn it over where they turned it over. Yeah, Malik Cunningham threw a really ugly interception along the sideline <laughs> in the first was half. That, it was a duck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he played better in the second half. Ended up throwing three hey, touchdowns. How about Miami going with the jump pass? Yeah, I did see that. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Derek, actually, oh, Derek King looked better. Yep. Um, A nice performance from him. 325 throwing three touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, Cameron uh, Harris had a big day running the, the ball for the Canes. Another 100 yard performance. He had performance. That one really long run. 75 uh, yards. Yep. Yeah. Um, He's doing his best Edger and James impersonation. Yeah. Maybe, and then uh, Miami Frank had that. Moore. Miami also had that seventy-five yard touchdown pass where there was nobody within fifty yards of that receiver. <laughs> Got so, that guy could have speed walked into the end. Literally, the entire Louisville defense was on the what other was side that, of the was field. That like a all-out blitz. That looked like something you <laughs> see know. on Waterboy or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but there was not a red shirt around that kid. I mean, that was – I've never seen, like, they weren't even in a screen. Like, no one was no. running. And, I mean, it was like, did they not have enough people on the I, – I kept wondering <laughs> yeah. if, like, they didn't have enough people on the field and they just had like, snapped it or something. Had, like, nine guys on the field. I don't well, know. The, I don't know if it would have mattered if they had 13 players on the field. I don't think there would have been any what, what, what did the What did Miami end up doing yardage-wise? So, total offensive yards, Miami had 485. But Louisville, <laughs> Louisville out <laughs> And Louisville outgamed them. Louisville had 516. See, if you have 516 yards, you should have more than 20 points. Louisville, Louisville outrushed them, had more rushing yards. J- JV and Hawkins had a heck of a night. That kid Whoever is good. Atwell is. Atwell is. Tutu crazy. Atwell had a big night catching, but that Hawkins kid running the ball, dude. He was getting six he yards like a carry. A little, he's a little diminutive guy, like a bowling ball that's just fast. Yeah. He got he averaged six yards a carry. Literally, they could have just handed the ball to him every single play. Which, you know, we talked about a little bit. Of, their offensive line's not that bad. I mean, no. Um, I, they didn't get very much pressure on King. I mean, that was one of the issues last year was – they were among the worst teams in the in the ACC in sacks, and you know that they're going to have to be able to get pressure on guys like Lawrence and Howell. And you just can't let those guys sit back there. You yeah, know? they only they only Louisville's defense only got one sack the entire game, and they're going to have to I, whether they have to blitz linebackers or safeties. They're going to have to do something and take a few chances. Maybe that was what they were doing on that play where it yeah. was wide open because they they weren't able, able to get pressure much at all with their front four. Yeah, and they only had uh, – the defense only had six tackles for loss, which, yeah, I mean, that's that's not great um, at all. So which tells me they're not getting a lot of push up front. No, they're not. Not at all. So the defensive line struggled. The secondary struggled for Louisville. Uh, but, yeah, De'Aaron King, I thought, played a lot better than he did against UAB the week before. Yeah, because quite frankly, I mean, I thought the announcers were being nice in that game, in the UAB game. <laughs> he didn't he didn't look very good at all. I mean, other than when he ran the ball, he looked pretty good doing that. But uh, throwing the ball, it was light years better against Louisville. Yeah, absolutely. So, disappointing, the final score, 47-34. It wasn't as close as we probably would have, would have thought it would have been. And we had both picked Louisville. Dude, it was a bad week for us picking games. I mean, well, Texas a State. Well, for those associated with App State. I yeah. mean, Sean Elliott, <laughs> yeah. Scott Satterfield, and Sean Clark lost. So, <laughs> we, uh, If it wasn't for Texas State beating UL Monroe, John, we would have gone 0-6 this week in our picks. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's true. And UL Monroe, I mean, that was a 
l- literally a dunk of a pick because yeah. they're not very good. <laughs> yeah. So what, uh, was the, what was the final in that game? By the the way? Texas State UL Monroe game. It won. Pull it up here. Thirty-eight seventeen. Texas State. Well, Monroe might be one of the worst. As good as the Sun Belt is, they might be the one of the worst teams. In the Actually, team. I'm just curious. I'm pulling up the box score here because I'm just. Uh, yeah. Uh, UL Monroe actually outgained Texas State in total yards, which tells you how bad they are. Yeah. <laughs> Their quarterback uh, threw uh, almost 400 yards. That doesn't – yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, would you – when you lose a game where you throw for almost 400 yards, I mean, that's quite an accomplishment. Yeah. It's like uh, like that Washington State game last year where the quarterback threw nine <laughs> touchdown passes and they lost. Yeah, he was like <laughs> second in NCAA history in yeah. touchdown passes. And yeah. The other guy was first. I yeah. Guess. Uh, but probably the most underrated game of the night, John, that was probably the best, was actually that Wake Forest-North Carolina State game on uh, the ACC Network last night. Both teams looked really – They did. Man, they looked really good. In that offenses, game. All, the offenses looked really good. And, you I know, think Wake is going to end up being a pretty good football team when it's all said and done. Yeah, they just – the defense has just not looked – Great at all. Sam Hartman had a better night uh, yeah. than he did against oh, Clemson. Obviously. Yeah, a lot better <laughs> night. Uh, the rushing game was better for for Wade. Overall, the offense was was really good. It was the defense, and you know we yeah. talked about it on, on the preview show when we were picking this game. You know we we were a little concerned with NC State because they just haven't had that quarterback that we're used to seeing come yeah. out of NC State. Uh, and Bailey Hockman, I thought, could be that yeah, guy. He had a he played really well. He threw the ball really well, and they had a you know a pretty good running attack as well. Yeah. Um, and I'll say this: I, I normally I don't like NC State jerseys, but those were pretty pretty sweet. Last I time. don't like the helmets though. The wolf. I don't, I don't like, like the, the helmets, I don't like the wolf I logo. Liked, I like the white uh, jerseys and the red pants. Those are pretty cool. Well, they wore they had the red jerseys and white. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, um, I miss the old block letter S that they used like, to have. I don't like. I don't like the old. Yeah, the NFC. Yeah, or whatever. With yeah. The, yeah, and I I don't like the all red look. Um, like red on red. I like really? the red on white. Yeah, I like the white helmets, red jerseys, and I like white. The red on red. I, I'm not a big NC State person either, but I like the red on red. I thought I think that's a see a like how Louisville looks like. I don't know. I mean, they had the red. A, they had like the red and the black. I like. I tell you, I like the the Wake Forest uniform because they're sweet. Yeah. Uh, the the matted helmets with the gold. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, good. But yeah, I mean, it was a good game. Uh, oh, again, uh, we 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 picked Wake Forest. We didn't know a lot about that NC State team, but you know they their offense they're, I thought was really still, good. You know, I think the NC State's going to be a. You know, one of those teams you can't take for granted this year. And I know, I know Clemson's not playing them for the first time in years. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, kind of unfortunate. But uh, on the same hand, I'm looking forward to seeing Clemson in North Carolina play during the regular season. Uh, and I think the NC State team is one that avoids Clemson. They could have a really good season if, you know, in the ACC. Yeah, they get a really good test. We'll see. We don't know anything about Virginia Tech. They haven't played. They Their game against Virginia got postponed, so they have to open up now with this North Carolina State team that's coming off a win, so we'll find out a little I bit see, more I about think that. I think that the teams that haven't played yet, and the, so, like, Baylor is probably going to get a team that played has already played yep. twice. You know, that's going to – sort of like in basketball when when the team that plays the playing game, it's never the second team that gets them. And, in fact, a lot of times you'll see an upset because the team has already played a game against yeah. a higher seed. Yes, uh, yeah. Um, so, like, these teams that have already played a game are going to be more crisp and, you know, they're going to play teams that are going to be making their first game mistakes, you know, the third week in the season. <laughs> but it's not an easy – I mean, if you just look at it, it's not an easy schedule for them. They they now have back-to-back road games against Virginia Tech and Pitt. This is North Carolina State I'm talking about. Virginia Tech well, and I mean, Pitt. I, you know, judging from the Pitt I saw yesterday, I mean, 
<laughs> they also have to play at North Carolina and then Miami. So I don't. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, you know, uh, at North Carolina, North Carolina did not play this past week, did they? They did not. Okay. Who do they have Saturday? Oh, they play. Uh, I think I used to know this. Uh, they well, they were they were supposed to play Charlotte. This past that weekend, right. they were that's supposed right. to play that's Charlotte. Right. That game got canceled. Uh, they have the week off now. They don't play BC until next weekend. It seemed like or okay, the so weekend after next weekend. We had what four games canceled due to COVID? Yes, this week. Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, BYU, Army, Houston, Baylor, Florida Atlantic, Georgia Southern, and then Central Arkansas, Arkansas State. So there were five. Yeah, I forgot about the floor. That the other the Florida Atlantic Georgia Southern game was literally a Saturday morning deal too. Yeah. So who knows? All right, John, we're going to take our final break, and we're going to come back and uh, let's go through our biggest, our top five biggest surprises, uh, takeaways, uh, and takeaways from this weekend. What really stood okay. out um, to us from this week three action in college football? You're listening to the spread. Let me tell you something, Cowboy. This rookie can really bring the heat. He's smoky and spicy with a Chipotle style all his own. It's a new Montgomery and Chipotle barbecue sauce. Make it a part of your home team. Available now at your neighborhood grocer or online at cincyfavorites.com. Hey, it's me, your cell phone. We need to talk about something, something serious. I know you love me. I know you like using me wherever you are, but I feel like this isn't working out when you're driving. I know you may think that it's possible to focus both on me and the road, but I just don't feel the same way. I think we should spend time away from each other when you're driving. It's for the best. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. You care for the house, the kids, and our future. A Shiro's day is never done. So let's start saving a little more now. Get free tips to help boost your retirement savings. Visit aceyourretirement.org slash Shiro. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Why was the basketball court all wet? Because the players kept dribbling on it. <laughs> the dad joke. Corny, grown worthy, but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. <laughs> so take a moment to make your kid laugh because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. All right. Final segment here of the show. Week three college football in the books. John. What were uh, some of our biggest takeaways? What were some of your biggest takeaway surprises? You know, for me, one of them was, and we talked about it, the App State Marshall game. We both thought yeah, was going to be, on. we both thought we were it was going to be an offensive showdown, and it turned out to be a, a defensive battle, which I did not see coming at all. No, it didn't. Um, it, it, it was a game that. Quite frankly, you would have thought it was the the first game of the year for each team. I mean, just so many penalties and you know, and and errors that you would think are you know you're making a mistake. I mean, and you're hoping the ref doesn't see it or whatever. But the sloppiness, um, and then I just think uh, really for a lot of in a lot of ways, Appalachian State has been disappointing in the first two games of the season compared to what the expectation was uh, coming into it. And I'm not ready. I'm I'm not ready to say that's, you know, an indictment on Sean Clark uh, per se, but, you know, uh, say what you will about Eli Drinkwitz, but he came in one year and had a, a stack deck, so to speak, and, you know, made the most of it going 12 and one or 13 and one. And, this year, um, you know, it was still a pretty stacked, you know, cupboard full yeah. of talent, and that that has it, it hasn't looked the same, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for for Appalachian yet. But you know, there's still a lot of the season left, and we still got the Sun Belt to go. So, 
no, it's not going to be a, a, a season to where we get eight and nine and zero undefeated. Um, yeah. But there's still a championship out there to win, and um, I think you know while the the loss maybe stings today, I think it'll it'll get less as the week goes along, and they'll be ready to play Campbell on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, I think that was yeah you know, a a big shock, a big surprise to, to both of us um, to see to see that game seventeen to seven. I I mean. I, I would have thought that would have been the score maybe in, at the end of the first quarter. I, I did not <laughs> yeah. did not foresee that being the final and uh, the way that I, I just felt like App's defense they stepped up there uh, once you know Marshall went down uh, and scored that first that first touchdown. I felt like the defense played better, but they just couldn't hold on and the offense didn't help them out at all um, in in that game. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a big surprise I I think to both of us. That game, another one, uh, and we didn't really talk about it at all. But uh, how about Boston College going to Durham and just thumping Duke? I mean, this is a Duke team that, I mean, played very well against Notre Dame the week before, and Boston College forces five turnovers and beats Duke twenty six to six. Yes. Um... I don't, and you know, we talked about kind of Boston College as a team. You always don't really know what to think about, you know, you know what to to expect out of them. Um, is it a case of, you know, Duke looked pretty good last week, but you know, Boston College is a little bit better than advertised, um, you know, because now I think there's, you know, Boston College could be one of those teams that jumps up and bites somebody. They've uh, got a good quarterback. This kid, Jerkovic or whatever his name yeah, is, that yeah. kid was good. 300 yards, two touchdowns. Yeah, Phil Jerkovic, I think Jerkovic or Jerkovic. Jerkovic, yeah, something like that. Yeah. And they've got Zay Flowers, the, um, uh, the receiver for, for yeah. Boston College. I mean, they've got some talent on that offense yeah, now. They have five catches for 162 <laughs> yards, which means you average like 30, 30 yards a catch. Yeah. <laughs> and he had a long of 61. That was the touchdown. Yeah, so wow. Um, yeah, so I'm a little disappointed. You know, uh, not, I'm not surprised. That I would say Duke's 0-2. I'm surprised at the way they're 0 2. I, I would have thought last week would have been the dominate the game yep. they got dominated yep. in and, and this game you know would have been a winnable game and it just it, from the outset it wasn't yeah i know you had chase bryce throw two interceptions he lost a fumble uh, it just it was not a good day for for the duke team and yeah boston college i feel like came out of nowhere and just i, I didn't expect that at all but you know now boston college are they a potential team now that in the ACC could give other teams some problems? So I guess one of my surprises is is, is SMU. SMU. Um, so <laughs> yeah, they go from barely it was it Texas State yes. they barely beat to get to dropping sixty five on another team from Denton, Texas. That is the North Texas Mean Green who <laughs> dropped thirty five. And still lost by thirty. <laughs> Shane Bouchel, three forty four, four touchdowns. Uh, yeah, so maybe uh, we said maybe the jury was out on SMU after game one, but you know it seems like they got some of their offensive mojo back. Yeah, they had the week off prior to that, so maybe yeah, maybe they did find <laughs> find something in that off week. <laughs> and. Um, you know, and, and another crazy game. I, I guess I'm going two in a row here, but no, that's fine. Yeah, go ahead. L- Louisiana Tech and Southern Miss. Southern Miss, you know, under the the direction of a new head coach, pretty much was trailing or yeah. leading the whole game, and here comes Louisiana Tech back to win thirty-one to thirty. How about the- a wild, crazy game? Southern Miss. They lose their opener, South Alabama. The coach quits the next week. And now they, they almost beat Louisiana Tech. Yeah, they had literally had the lead, you know, the whole game. Yeah, and then and then uh, ended up losing it late um, to Louisiana Tech. But um, still, I, I'm not sure what the problem is with Southern Miss. I, I saw, you know, a little bit of it. I didn't think they were that bad of a 
they didn't look like they did against South Alabama. Let's no, the offense way. actually played. I thought that the offense was better than they were against South Alabama. They're a little bit more consistent. Yeah, uh, the yeah. defense, though, there, especially in the second half, I mean, I don't, I don't know what happened with the defense. I don't know if Louisiana Tech just found their offense there in the second half or not, but they didn't hold on to, to win it. And, uh, I mean, especially, like you said, they'd, they'd had to lead the whole game pretty much. Yeah. Um, how, how about how about UTEP squeaking out a win over Abilene Christian? Dude, UTEP, man. And this is a UTEP team that nearly lost to Stephen F. Austin. <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing they weren't playing FBS team in those <laughs> first two weeks. Good uh, God. 24 um, to 14 against Stephen F. Austin. And then yeah. they got 59 to 3 against Texas. <laughs> There's a little bit of a, you know, at least they've stayed within the state of Texas. You know, there's three games. Just for just for giggles, we might have to pick that the UTEP U, Louisiana Monroe game next week. <laughs> wow. <laughs> if that's not on Ryan McGee's not top 10 list. <laughs> Then uh, that's you know awesome. I can't. That's a that's an that's a basically an alley oop that he just has to dunk. I that mean, yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, well, John, we were talking about it in the break. One of mine. How about Navy? You know, week oh, one yeah. they got destroyed at home by BYU. Have the week off. They're down by they 20, tackled all They're week. down by twenty one points in this game against Tulane on Saturday, and and come back and win it. Twenty-four. Yep. They, they, they. Lar- I think it was one like of the, the largest, biggest com- yeah. comeback in school history. Or something. Twenty-four point deficit. Sorry, twenty-four point deficit, and they end up coming back and winning all of their points in the second half. Tulane didn't. <laughs> and and you got to consider this. Is not like a West Coast offense. We're talking no. about here. It's a, the, the, it's a team that usually gets behind by two scores and never gets back. in Never it gets yet. back in it. The score. It was twenty four to nothing at halftime. It ended up being twenty seven twenty four. I mean, yeah. Dalen Morris, the quarterback for Navy, six completions for one hundred and thirty nine yards. That'd be like okay, so that'd be like the Citadel or Wofford or somebody getting behind by that many by that many winning. Yeah, exactly. You know, it just doesn't happen too much too often for an option team and. To their credit, I mean, you know, I didn't see much of that game, but that's a good two lane team. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's a that's a team that I would say, uh, you know, they lost to, to BYU the yeah. first game. Yeah, they could get. I mean, if not beat BYU, give them a good game. Yeah, uh, no, I I completely agree. I mean, it was, so what a comeback win for them. Uh, you know, we talked about the North Carolina State game. One of my other takeaways was that NC State offense. I mean. We didn't know what to to think about them coming into the year, and I thought they they really showed out and played well. Yeah, I, I thought so. And you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, two more. Uh, I think one of the disappointments so far this year. And granted, you know, uh, Western Kentucky had to start off the season against Louisville, but they could beat by Liberty. Um, 30 to 24 and I mean, Liberty's not bad. I'm not saying that, but to be a program that was thought of it, you know, just a year or two ago was one of the better group of five schools. Yeah. Um, Western looks bad. Kentucky, Western Kentucky. They, they haven't looked and you know, they may lose to Chattanooga. <laughs> that game's like in <laughs> late October. So we'll see if they improve by then. Yeah. But, uh, um, Another game is Troy and, and Middle Tennessee State. I think Middle Tennessee has been another one of those disappointments. Disappointments, yeah. And Troy looked good for their first game. I thought they played well. Isn't there a cool name for the, the Middle Tennessee-Western Kentucky game? It's like the 100 miles of hate or something. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? We were doing yeah. rivalry. Rivalry game, something like that, yeah. Um, but those uh, – you know, I, I think Troy's always a pretty solid Sun Belt team. Um, but yeah. Middle Tennessee State has gotten blasted in both their games. Yeah, yeah. So, and then uh, one final one that uh, I think we can talk about, John, that we didn't, haven't talked about, Notre Dame. Um, 
yeah. they they had a lot of trouble against Duke a week ago. Um, the offense did yeah, the right. offense didn't look good. Um, the defense played well last week, but the offense did not look good at all. And then they come out here against USF this week and lay fifty two on them. <laughs> I don't know what I'm, I, I'm and let's let's be fair. Um, Jeff Scott. Uh, took over a tough situation at South Florida. I don't think they're very good. Yeah. Um, but I didn't expect 52-0. No, no, not, uh, a, not at all. And uh, Ian Book, I know he really didn't have to throw it uh, in, <laughs> in this game. He, he only threw 143 no. yards passing, yeah. but Notre Dame had uh, almost 300 yards rushing uh, on the day. Yeah, and Ian, think, Book, uh, Ian Book US- ran... Ian Book ran the ball four times, three of them for touchdowns. ESF, USF read a good book. They didn't watch film. No. <laughs> Notre Dame, I don't think. No, so. they did not. Yeah, Jordan uh-huh. McLeod, the, the the quarterback for South Florida, it was a, not a good day for him. And just <laughs> offensively, I felt like South Florida struggled. I mean, all day. They just couldn't do anything. Notre Dame. Uh, so, Notre Dame, did they block a punt versus Duke last week? I want to say that they block. Did they block? I thought they was they it did a, something on special teams. Like was it a what was it a block? I know they made the the they did a fake punt where they okay, picked up yeah, the yeah. first down. Maybe they faked it like two, a punt two weeks in a row or something, but uh, something on special teams that I caught the end of. Um, but just really a demolition of. I mean, we knew Notre Dame's defense was pretty good. Um, I, I, I can see that last week against Duke. Yeah, so um, Jordan Bethello had a one-yard return of a blocked punt for a touchdown. <laughs> that counted as a yard, but he was in the end zone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you can't really put a zero. The reason they had to do that is on, on stat the stat program, you can't put a zero-yard return for a touchdown. Like it. That wouldn't make any sense. So you, so you got to count one. it as a yard. So a week yeah. after USF gets a one yard touchdown off a bad punt, they <laughs> they end up doing it to Notre Dame. Right, exactly. Um, so that that is pretty. You know what? Go, you know, sometimes karma comes back to get you in a big way. Yeah. So those were some of my big surprises. All in all, not a terrible week. Um, but John, I'm, week next week. I'm really excited to talk about next week on uh, on Thursday. Thursday yeah. SEC starting up this weekend. Finally, um, college football is starting. It's really going to start feeling like a normal college football now season. Now I feel like with the SEC coming back, and then uh, in about a month you'll have the Big Ten come back. But yeah, I'm really excited to talk about the SEC uh, and next week's schedule on uh, Thursday. Yeah, it'll be it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. And you know, like you said, we won't have the, the good thing about not having any non-conference games for the SEC is you won't have to wait for Alabama to play, you know, Texas A and M yeah. Commerce or something <laughs> before they get to SEC. Uh, play. App, app's former coach Eli Drinkowitz gets started with the Tide. He has to take on. The Crimson Tide, his new team, Missouri, taking on. Of course, uh, there'll be some in black and gold and Boone, North Carolina, rooting that he'll lose every game. Really? <laughs> well, I mean, you usually don't stay one year and make too many friends. Yeah. You, you leave after one year. <laughs> I guess but. that's true. I guess that's true. But, uh, well, John, this has been a lot of fun. A good weekend this week. Looking forward to getting back Thursday and talking about next weekend. Looking forward to it, man. Uh, always, always fun. And uh, as we get deeper into the season, um, it's only going to get better. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, John, uh, this has been fun. You've been listening to the spread. Thanks for listening to the spread podcast here on Podbean. Head on over to thespreadfootball.com and check out all of our weekly articles and catch replays of each show on the podcast page. Also, head on over to social media and follow us on Facebook at The Spread with Cameron Tarrant and on Twitter at The Spread Podcast. We'll catch you next time.